out-of-control violence on city streets. Nashville approaches a record high for murders, including a disturbing number of young victims. One death of a, of a young person is too many. Our teens are dying for no reason. It's our own kids that are shooting our own kids. My heart is broken to pieces. It would never be the same. He does no good being in the ground. And Nashville children growing up surrounded by violence are suffering their own wounds. When an elementary school student sees someone get shot, what does that do to them? <sighs> Gangs will recruit elementary school students. What's being done to make our community safe? On your mark. I'm trying to start a program out here. Get set. I'm trying to bring the parents together. Go. There's a tremendous change since we started. <laughs> it is awesome to have people like that in my life. News Channel 5 presents Enough, Violence Killing Our Kids. It is a number that is almost incomprehensible. More than 100 people killed in our city since the beginning of 2017. They are our friends, our neighbors, and they're leaving behind broken families and broken neighborhoods. City leaders are struggling to grapple with the problem. Especially when so many of the victims are teenagers. Here now is Chris Conti. Some people call this a crisis. Some people call it an epidemic. But when children as young as seven are being murdered in broad daylight, what this truly is, is unacceptable. So tonight we are saying enough to the violence killing our kids. It snuck in quietly, moved in, often hidden behind a cloak of darkness. Then suddenly, all at once, we started noticing it was there. And we begin with that breaking news. A young girl has been shot. A spike in homicides and tonight a city in crisis. A community in shock after a seven-year-old is shot and killed by her two-year-old cousin. Nine days into the new year, Nashville experienced its first homicide. No one could have predicted then the pain that would soon follow. It's our own kids that are shooting our own kids. Al Ganji's 14-year-old son Clayton was with friends on June 24th of this year when one of them pulled out a gun, and now Clayton is gone. What did you lose? Everything. My whole life. This is what violence is doing to our community. 14-year-old boy that loved me. I loved him more than anything in this world. And he's gone because of some stupid kid's mistake. Clayton was this year's 57th homicide victim. The teenagers who shot him had such little regard for his life that they couldn't be bothered to call for help. Shot once in the side, the bullet ricocheted, tore up his insides and he bled out. He was then pushed out of the car in the parking lot of the hospital by his friends and left there to die. It is a story repeated too many times. He's been shot a couple times. <laughs> in too many different ways. We need to put a stop to all these guns and these violence. It was October 8th when Shatika Begley lost her daughter Debriana. The 16-year-old was hit by a bullet during a drive-by shooting at the Casey Homes in East Nashville. I was holding my baby in my arms when she died, taking her last breath. I Shouldn't no mother never have to go seeing their daughter die in their arms. Shouldn't nobody never have to go through that. I swear, Nunu, I love you so much, baby. We'll be done with the troubles. To this day, no arrests have ever been made in Debriana's death. Oh, I'm going home. Y'all took her. That's something I would never get back. Never turn yourself in. No more. She was the city's 91st homicide victim. She dreamed of becoming a lawyer. When you hear that number, 91 people, what do you think? It tears my heart apart. It tears my heart to pieces. I'm going up. Of the more than 100 people killed this year, 25 of the victims have been under the age of 20. Keith, Colby, Harmony, Janicia, Eduardo, Ahmad, on and on and on it goes. They took a piece of my life, my heart. <laughs> this is my only daughter. Seemingly unending violence that knows no boundaries, no limits, and no minimum age requirement. 
Harmony Warfield was seven years old. It is all right to cry. It's your baby, you don't get her back. It's all right to cry. It's your granddaughter, she's not coming back. It's all right to cry. On a warm June afternoon, her small casket was put in the tiniest of hearses. Stuffed animals were placed gently inside as she left for the cemetery. How is this happening? And you just sit there and you think this shouldn't happen. Right, it shouldn't. As the mayor of Nashville, Megan Barry knows this is a problem she cannot ignore. Do you feel responsible personally to fix this? Sure, I mean, you know, as the mayor of the city, I absolutely feel a personal responsibility for the safety of our citizens. Uh, so this is something that weighs on my mind every day. So what's causing this? Part of the problem is tied to the city's growth. As neighborhoods gentrify, those who were already struggling economically are being pushed further away from the urban core. That makes it harder to access public transportation, harder to access jobs, and easier to turn to crime. How do we fix this? There isn't one answer. There's many answers. I mean, and it takes an entire community uh, to wrap their arms around this. For the mayor, part of the solution is policing. 70 more officers have been hired in the last year. You have a good night. Yeah. 22 of them are focused primarily on community policing and foot patrols. We know that if a child is engaged and busy and learning the skill set and with adults that are mentoring them, their outcomes are going to be way better. To keep kids off the street, the city is trying to get additional funds to have community centers open longer. When you just hear about one of these kids who dies, what goes through your mind? Well, pain. Pain for that family, uh, you know, one death of a, of a young person is too many. And yet city officials, city police cannot fix this problem themselves. What do you hope these kids learn from your son's death? The gun violence is not cool. Al Ganji wants other parents, other teenagers to listen to him. He admits he should have been more involved in Clayton's life, should have done more about the Snapchats his son was receiving where kids were showing off their guns. Should have known Clayton was using Uber to get around because he was too young to have a license. Even after your son died, we had all these homicides. Kids don't learn. Parents, they have to wake up. Six months have now come and gone since Clayton Ganji was killed. Al Ganji has never found the courage to visit his son <laughs> until now. That's not how I remember my son. I wish that day would have never happened. I can't erase it. I can't go back in time. If I could, I'd rather it be me than him. Standing at his son's grave, he cannot help but wonder what he could have done differently, what you can do differently. One parent opens up their eyes and says, you know, maybe my kid is doing something wrong. Because if we don't start saying enough to the violence killing our kids, yeah, it puts them in the ground for no reason. This is where too many of them will end up. I'm a grieving father. My son lost his life for the stupidest thing in the world, the stupidity. Coming up. It's not unusual to get a firearm off a juvenile these days. And later. It's too much killing and it's too much gangsters. When enough continues. There are more officers patrolling Nashville streets than ever before. But the city is still nearing a record number of homicides. And no neighborhood is immune. You're looking at a map of all of this year's homicides. But there's one East Nashville neighborhood in particular that has become the city's deadliest. Dan Kennedy takes us there, where police are stepping up foot patrols, hoping that maybe the violence will slow down. He was my best friend, my cousin, my all. Lost, heartbroken. I'm so confused right now. At East Nashville's James Casey Homes, violence knows no holidays. Whoever did this, turn yourself in. Just two days before Thanksgiving, Horace Whitley became the neighborhood's sixth murder victim this year. You know, times is hard, but it don't have to be that way. The majority of the, any type of uh, criminal activity that occurs here, it's not the people that live here, it's 
people coming over here to try to prey on the citizens here. Metro Police Sergeant Marty Reed was one of the first officers on scene that day. He takes the violence in this community personally. It's why he's helping test out a new way of building relationships with those in James Casey. We are on walking patrol. We walk through here, just random locations, and make contact with the citizens here. You can do it. One more. And this is a relatively new program that you started, right? It's uh, a pro about three to three and a half months old. What are you seeing so far in those three months? I've seen a dramatic change in the during our shift that we work of any type of violence or criminal activity. The thought may seem obvious. More police, less crime. But they're trying to go deeper than that. It's also a chance to get to know their neighbors by name. On your mark, get set, go. Both those who commit crime and those who don't. The vast majority of the juveniles over here are perfect. They, they do everything they spoke to. It's the few juveniles that have trouble issues. We constantly see them over and over. To me, they're out of juvenile before we have a chance to finish our paperwork. The problem of recurring juvenile violence is catching the attention of cops, not just at the street level. And what I see here in Nashville is uh, uh, children coming up in a violent world and becoming violent themselves. And Police Chief Steve Anderson joined Metro as an officer in the 70s and has seen a lot change during his rise to top cop. One of the most disturbing trends is criminals getting younger and younger. It's very discouraging that, uh, you know, that we've got young people, kids, you know, uh, second, third, fourth graders, uh, that uh, that's where the attraction begins. When it comes to young people, Chief Anderson says the biggest race is against time. The family influence uh, on the children is so very important, uh, guiding them into uh, adulthood. It's a race for who can reach these kids first, gangs and criminals or police and family. There is not uh, persons in those young children's lives that push them forward or give the encouragement. So our police officers in a good many uh, situations are the bridge. Nashville is on track for one of its most violent years on record. There's been close to 100 homicides, closing in on the city's record of 112 set 20 years ago. Shootings as a whole are up 40% over last year. And juveniles ages 13 to 17 shot this year, up 46%. There's no denying the problem, but what's the solution? The one word answer I've got to everything is hope. If you grow up in an environment where you have no hope of a future, uh, then you fall into a crowd or with associates, with friends, uh, that in fact uh, gun violence is prevalent. The battle can't be won overnight. It requires a little fight from everyone. And as Chief Anderson says, kids need hope when they're hurting for it most. Nine teenagers arrested for homicide this year alone. What's your reaction when you look at those young faces? No hope. That's the sad thing. I don't see any hope in their eyes at all. Coming up. Guess what? Now we have nothing. Nothing. And later. To just take another person's life, that's evil. When enough continues. Welcome back. I'm News Channel 5's Jason Lamb. The search for solutions to the violence killing our kids is a conversation that extends deep into Nashville's neighborhoods, like this one, where some ideas are already taking off. But others say the solutions some city leaders are proposing don't go far enough. I always tell them that they can be whoever they want to be. You can find big dreams just waiting to grow at the Fallbrook Apartments in Nashville. Dreams nurtured in the hearts of kids like Treshawn Glenn. I want to be a doctor when I grow up, so that's why I try so hard in school to get A's. But almost every day, Treshawn sees the struggle that has claimed the dreams of so many others. It's too much killing and it's too much gangsters. I don't like this stuff. They don't even have a chance to even get through school. They didn't even get a chance. They had number rocks, the basketball court. We need all that back, man. What y'all play with out here? Nothing. Terry Key started the Edge Hill Bike Club. They're old school bikes, but they, they ride, feel the tires. A program providing neighborhood kids with a new way to get around. I want this right here. 
They already working on bikes. They doing it on their own. I ain't even got to say nothing. Terry grew up here. He says curbing gun violence starts with youngsters seeing more nearby role models. It's going to have to take real people that grew up in these neighborhoods to come back out in these in, back in their neighborhood and to tell their life story, how they changed around. Terry says starting young, they need to see examples of how other people's dreams came true. Oh, turn it over, man, ride it. See if you can ride it. We need to spend time in these neighborhoods, walk through the neighborhoods, get to know the, the people who live in these neighborhoods. And then that's when they'll feel comfortable on telling you the truth on what's really going on and how we can help you. That sentiment is shared by Yvette Boyd, a mother of a 12 and eight year old. Yeah, that's the one that loves to dance. And my daughter loves to play basketball. <laughs> Who says politicians stopping by for an annual visit isn't enough. Just getting involved more to where we feel like that we can trust and feel comfortable with them. To where we can be able to open up and, and feel like that we can, okay, everybody can come together to have a better environment. Yvette goes as far as to say the feeling in these neighborhoods most affected by the violence is that the city's elected leaders don't care about them. No, I excuse my language, but I really, really actually think they don't give a shit, you know. I, I, I actually think that they don't because their job and their position that they have to do is really basically focused and based on their position that they have to play. It's a view that was highlighted in March of last year following a series of meetings when a group of city leaders put together the Nashville Youth Violence Summit Report for the mayor's office. One of the factors the report concluded led to violent behavior feeling left out. We just felt left out and just pushed away. We have plenty of houses who need this story. Over in the Edge Hill community, you'll find Michelle Compton and her nine-year-old son, Rashad. Guess what? Now we have nothing. Nothing. We have absolutely nothing. Right now, their dream is something much more immediate. We deserve to have a place where we can come to to purchase the things that we need to provide for our families. The Edge Hill grocery store closed a few weeks back, the only walkable grocery store in their neighborhood. Many here don't have cars or bus fare to take them to the nearest supermarket, more than two miles away. A lot of us, like myself, don't have transportation, can't get rides to the store with or without gas money. This is just one example of how Michelle says while the rest of the city seems to move forward, her neighborhood is being ignored. While the store is privately owned, Michelle's looking for a solution from city leaders, a solution she thinks they won't take the time to find. When they say, let's build a new bridge, oh, they have all the time in the world. When they say, let's build half a million dollar homes around the Air Chill community, they have a lot of time. But let's say elective office, let's do something about our Edge Hill community store. Then that's when everybody just lay back. More than that, Michelle says the loss of the store in this neighborhood leads to the loss of more than just groceries. When you don't have the necessary means and the necessary resources that it takes, it plays a huge part in your mind. A sense of despair that for some here, can lead to much more. Some people lead to selling drugs, robbing, stealing. You can find so many dreams. We gotta stay right here now, come on son. Among those who call okay. this neighborhood home. You ready? I am, I'm gonna play baseball. Get on there and see you ready. In a search for ways to stop our city's gun violence, we need that store back open, like we really do. People here say listening to those dreams may be just the place to start. So I can have a better life and move on. Coming up. Gangs will recruit elementary school students. When Enough continues. The violence this year has at times seemed pervasive, but just breaking the cycle won't fix this. Instead, we need to adapt to a completely new way of thinking when it comes to young people and how they cope. Innocent people are losing their life. 
There was a time when these fields in Old Hickory brought Avita and Mitchell Osborne joy. Now they are only filled with reminders of what they've lost. Hurt. Sad. Sad. Confused. Ahmad Osborne was number 54 in the city's growing list of homicides this year. A number with a face and a name and a family. He was only 18. And so I go to that day that they hurt him. They didn't have to hurt Maud, even if they robbed him. He would have gave them whatever they wanted. They didn't have to hurt him. No. At least 20 other Ahmads will have disappeared from Metro Nashville classrooms by year's end. We're front lines people now. And now it's not just police officers who are answering the call to help. We're seeing students that are coming in from traumatic environments and situations in which we have to then approach our way of school a bit differently. Matthew Portell is the principal of Fall Hamilton Elementary. What are you working on? Where their curriculum now includes much more than reading and writing. This is a spot where kids can actually go. Every classroom in this school has a de-escalation space where students can go to calm down when faced with a stressful situation. By suspending them from school by pushing them out of the building. That isn't a message that we care about them. So many students are being impacted by violence here that they had to change their way of thinking. Our kids aren't broken. We don't need to fix our students. Uh, we need systems of support to make them successful. So my friend. Madison Steele is a trauma-informed practitioner. Have you ever felt rage before? Every day she meets with these elementary school students, many of whom have witnessed shootings at home lost loved ones to this year's violence. I lost this person, I lost this person, this person could be next. You know, why should I care about school? Why should I care about my friends? What do our actions look like when we're having bad thoughts and bad feelings? Her goal is to reverse the effects adverse experiences are having on these kids' brain development. Even though these things have happened around them and to them, they don't define who they are. The goals here are long-term. And sometimes we maybe fight. But I haven't heard about you fighting this week. She's teaching her kids how to better handle their emotions in hopes it will someday translate to safer, less violent communities. What are these little kids seeing? They see a lot of things that we don't want them to. Breaking the cycle of youth violence in Nashville is starting here. We're trying to foster the resilience in these kids and letting them know that there is still light. Whenever he had the ability, he would ride in the rodeo. For Ahmaud Osborne's family, efforts to break the cycle of youth violence can't bring him back. Before somebody pulls the trigger, they probably should stop and think, would you want somebody to do that to your mom, to your dad, to your brother, to your sister? Think before you act. They just hope that other people see their son's story and start saying enough to the violence killing our kids. But I do want justice served for my son. I want more done. This conversation is far from over. On Facebook Live right now, we will take your questions about this year's violence and try to offer more perspective and answers. And on our website right now, a dedicated site where you can explore in-depth interviews, learn more about the victims, and find resources if you or someone you know needs help dealing with violence. Thank you for watching this News Channel 5 special presentation, Enough.